Hey guys, it's Maggie. And Zach. And we are back today with a video that some of you guys did request in one of my previous videos. Yep. We're going to be talking about Zach's honest opinions <laughs> of his wife having an ostomy. I'm nervous. I don't know I've, what to I've expect. I've got some hardcore questions. <laughs> These are from some subscribers and they did not go easy. All right. I have so. not seen, heard, and I'm still not allowed to know these questions or even the title of this, so I, I, I am in for one. a surprise. I did tell him one question, but I have nine here, and there are okay. some with multiple parts, so it's really more than that. Um, so I think that we just dive into it. Let us go. By the way, some of these questions were asked multiple times in different ways, so I kind of just combined some, and I think that it'll cover the answer that some of you were looking for. So I do apologize. I have to sneeze, I think. Do you really? <laughs> nope, it's gone. I'm all good. Wait. Okay. Sorry. All right, so the first question. Did Zach know beforehand about the ostomy, or was it a conversation you had to have at the beginning? Hmm. So, technically speaking, I knew about it, but I had no clue about it. I knew she had something, but I did not really understand fully what it was as I was a sophomore in college. <clears throat> uh, many of you know the man-child. He was the one that more or less introduced the two of us together, and I believe he said, like, she has a bag or she has, I don't know if he said an ostomy, but she has a bag or something, and it was new to him, too. So um, I was like, oh, all right, um, don't really know what that is. Seems perfectly fine, normal, no. <laughs> yeah, I remember telling him, like, I have a good memory. I know where we were when I told Tyler. I don't remember telling him. So when we met, <clears throat> it was almost like, he. Kn I know he knows. I didn't tell him, but I know that he knows because Tyler's a big mouth person and yeah <laughs> tells everything about everybody <laughs> so yeah we, just kind of seemed almost like an article of clothing it, to me yeah. it was kind of hi buddy yeah. hi, hi Bruno. Bruno. always likes to be on camera i don't think he's on or camera near camera <laughs> he's near if the camera was close to us i would show you oh you're gonna make a lot of noise aren't you you're cute though Anywho. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have a memory of telling Zach specifically about it. And um, yeah. I, it's like the things that he learned about it, he's learned over the last 10 years. So, yeah, just, just in small amounts. It's like yeah. a article clothing, honestly, to me. I don't really think anything else about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just to answer, because a few people are wondering how we met, we did meet through the man-child. Um, that is correct. You guys were roommates. I lived in the apartment downstairs from yep. them. Um, so he had had a intramural, like, co-ed soccer team that he was doing. I said, hey, I played soccer <laughs> growing up, so sure, I'll join. And Zach joined. And that's kind of how we met and started hanging out and yeah that's how this kicked off one thing led to another and now we're here talking about um how we met <laughs> yeah. yeah okay next question was zach more concerned or more curious when you told him did he ask you lots of questions about your ostomy um about how it worked and affected you I would say prob. Oh, that's a tough one, actually. I don't think you did. I don't think you had any thoughts about it. it At didn't first, seem no. Like I was it. just kind of like, it's just part of your life. It didn't seem like it bothered you or anything. Um, I would say initially, early on, yeah, it was more just. Maybe I didn't want to uh, come off as rude or something with a girl I was interested in at the time. So I didn't really uh, want to offend or anything. So I pretty much, I think I kept fairly quiet about it outside of just basic here and there questions. Um, and I would say, I guess as time progressed on, um, was less curious because I knew more about it. It was just always more concerned about any health uh, ramifications to her. 
Yeah. But well, the way you approached it, I thought was perfect because I like to be able to control how much I share. I don't mm-hmm. like, I guess, people going too hardcore with questions yeah. about it. So I think that was. I don't know. It just worked out yeah. really well. I didn't feel pressured to tell him anything, but I also wasn't embarrassed if he saw it or I don't know. Um, I will say I've told this story before on this channel. The first night that I spent over at Zach's, my bag oh, yeah. did come unclipped in his bed. We had only known each other for a few weeks at that point, I think. And um, I wanted to crawl into a hole and die. I was mortified. He handled it, like, the best possible way, though. He was like, oh, okay, like, I'll just go put my sheets in the wash, and um, you clean yourself up here. Let me know if you need anything. You were so just like, this isn't a big deal, which is what I needed. But I remember going back to my dorm room and sobbing the entire day. I spent the entire day in bed thinking, this guy's never going to talk to me again. It was actually your roommate that came over, Brad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he had something with your fraternity or something that day that you were busy. Possibly, yeah. So his roommate came over and he was like, he's not, like, it's fine. Like, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, So I was like, okay, I'm going to wait for Zach to call me. And (laughs) you did. And we're together today. So I guess it worked out. But, yeah, I I (laughs) thought I was going to die. I literally was like, nope. Yeah, wasn't that big of a deal. (laughs) I'm glad you thought so. <laughs> I, thought the, I thought it was the biggest deal ever, so <laughs> that was horrible. And now my bag, if it fell off in bed, you just, like, hear me cursing in the middle of the night. And you're like, okay, go put a towel down. That's as long as I deal. can keep sleeping, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, you don't care. How did he handle it the first time he saw you very sick? Sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, was I comfortable letting you see how bad things could get for me? Um, or did it take time to trust, um, to build trust in that regard? So two part question took time. Uh, I don't think up, well, I, you didn't when we first started me. dating, you were in very good health. Yeah. Um, I was in my you had best no health. issues. The, I guess most long sustained remission. Yeah. So it was worse later on in our relationship. So we were much closer. I think. I mean, engaged it's, really by then. Well, I think the last two years has been the worst that he has seen me. And yeah, it's if anything, it's just frustrating because I can't do anything to help. Yeah. And that's, I, I, I wish I could give a better or more uh, detailed answer. It's just frustrating because there's nothing you can do except Which, be supportive. And at times it feels like that's not enough. I got a comment from somebody. I was talking about nausea and I'm sorry, I don't remember whose name it was who said this, but they're like, Don't you hate when your caregiver or whoever is, like, trying to touch you when you're nauseated? And I was like, yes. And that's something you used to do. Um, Even my dad used to do it. Because you don't know. (laughs) And it's all, it's literally like, I need fresh air. I need space. Like, get away from me. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. But you don't know until you learn. So, um, it's just frustrating. you've You've learned to like, listen, when I'm like, when I say get a bowl, don't bring the smallest bowl as a joke. I always bring the smallest bowl as a joke. You you do. But he does come also with the biggest bowl because he knows what's, was about to happen. She has a lot of volume inside of her. Stop. (laughs) Yeah. When I throw up, it's not, it's not good. It's not pretty. (laughs) All right. Next question. Um, did you ever worry that you would get uncomfortable during intimate moments? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How are you going to answer that one, buddy? <laughs> no. I, I, I'm trying to think if that was ever mm-hmm. even a concern or thought, and I would say no. What about, did you ever think you were going to hurt my stoma? Um... Ah, uh, that is a tough one. I, I'm honestly trying to think. I, I don't think I was uh, ever I don't remember concerned ever... about it or anything. And again, I... I, I think you would have read me. Like, yeah. I would have been like... I'm pretty... I would like that. to think I'm pretty attuned to social cues, so... Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think I was... Like, I... Again, I didn't know much about it. I probably just adhered to common sense and uh, wouldn't want to, like bump into it intentionally or 
And I tell you. Yeah. Like, sometimes if he grabs me to, like, pick me up or whatever, I'm like, you're on my stoma. Get off of it. And I just tell him straight up. But I think it took yeah. a lot of time to get there. It took me a long time to show him my stoma. Like, probably a few years. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was more ready for it than you were because I was just interested. Yeah, I was... Like, I didn't know if it was going to be active or whatever. And I still, like, you've never seen me empty yeah. the bag. You've seen me change it when it's yeah. behaved. But I, I'm i still, you know, maybe in 50 years <laughs> yeah. we'll but be there. But not yet. <laughs> it's kind of just like a subconscious thing now because I'm aware that she has the bag there. And like she said, if I go to grab her, I just kind of, yeah. like, I'll put this hand a little more in front of this one a little off to the side. and I don't... <laughs> You're used to it, too. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just part of a part it. of us. Okay. Um, do you ever get embarrassed when my stoma makes noises? <laughs> he finds it funny. No, and I'll take the blame. And actually, we had a few friends over a couple weekends ago, and we were all playing Cards Against Humanity, and my stupid stoma, because I was taking that Carafate stuff, and my stoma doesn't like it, it made a really loud and sudden noise, and I <laughs> just, like, turned red. And I explained it to everybody. I was like, damn it, because they all know I have an ostomy. I'm like, ah, come on. You were laughing. You were laughing at me. Every time that we're at dinner somewhere and there are other people around, he knows that it's making noise because I... It embarrasses her more than me. So it does. I, and I'm not embarrassed by that. So, I, again, if someone looked, I would just be like, sorry, that not, was me. Yeah, I try not to be <laughs> embarrassed, but I most definitely get embarrassed about it, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I'll explain it sometimes. I remember it did it in front of a patient one time. And the patient's okay. parents. Actually, it was a baby, so the pa baby didn't care. The parents <laughs> That'd be were surprising. like, "What was that?" So I explained, like, "I have an ostomy," and they were like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Oh no, I have to go into this long explanation about why my stomach just made this really loud noise. This, this is terrible. I hate I this." I mean, it's so different, like, than sometimes, like, you get when you, I guess, if you're really hungry, your stomach makes loud noises. I hear that. It's all just louder though because it's external. That's it is that's true. the annoying thing is like when I get hungry, that's when it. Yeah. makes some noises but, so yeah doesn't embarrass me it does for me <laughs> <laughs> um okay how does zach balance his love for you work a social life outside of you and caring for me you that's easy she's I'm all sick. of them i i mean <laughs> we're together 99 percent of the day yeah every day so of the year. <laughs> it's Pretty, I mean... Yeah, my partner, my friend, my colleague, um, all the above. So you just find someone that completes you and it's pretty easy. I think <laughs> that we're a good balance of, I don't know, attitude and personality. Because if you cannot tell, Zach is the calm one. And there are some people that just don't get anxious about things. You're one of them. It's me. And I try to explain what that feels like, and he doesn't understand it. And I don't understand how he doesn't feel it. So, but it's worked out because we balance each other out. I am yeah. like worst case scenario person. So <laughs> you're like head in the clouds yeah. person. Hopefully, I cover that question. I, I wish yeah. there was. I, I, I mean, it's a lot of. It's not really a much lot of balance, those honestly. Elements are our lives mesh together. Yep. I think with social life. You have friends in this area that you go and see, like, on your own. We have our friends here a lot, um, and I will oftentimes... Which, hello to anyone of them watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are a few. But um, we have them here, and I will often, like, go to bed early. That way you're hanging out with them, and I'm not yeah. around. I don't know what you guys do without me, but... We just talk badly about you. That's what I figure, so, you know. <laughs> but... That's, I mean, that's how we balance it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, again, we like being together, so it's not really hard for us. Do you think we'll ever get sick of each other? Probably. Nah. We'll see what the next century holds. Next century? I yeah. do not have plans to be around next century. All <laughs> right, let's continue on with some questions What here. number are we on now? Seven. How, oh, wow. Doing how good. do I deal with keeping you in the loop? Calendar invites. Yes. I'm Cal terrible with names, terrible with dates, uh, and 
I don't want to say it like this. Uh, you're almost like a secretary to me where you have to just keep me up to date with everything. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's, I again, I'm just truly awful with dates and names. So she has to remind me of everything and like every <laughs> hopefully not annoying. Oh, but. yeah. Everything in life. Calendar I, invites, scheduled yeah. text messages, but especially with my health, like I have a procedure coming up next month. I immediately sent him a calendar invite yep. for it. Um, so he's aware and that way he doesn't schedule anything. And it's not that I would, it's just we have always so much going on. We've just always felt like we're swamped with yeah. <laughs> ob obligations. So, and I don't know if that's the best answer, but it's for us, it's truly just calendar or like we're going out somewhere and I just think of something. I, For me, I have to just physically write it down all the time or I will forget it and it's unfortunate. And I like text you things. So yeah, like I we went out things. last night, there was something I was thinking of, I didn't want to forget it. So I was going to go put our chickens up and I was like, Max, could you just shoot me a quick text? And Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's kind of how we handle it. I would say I'm definitely more like organized and very thorough with things yep. so i keep him on track yeah dates i am just awful with yep i tell That's him so we pick the easiest anniversary for me yes well for both of us yes but, but like names i tell you everybody's name yeah i forget everyone almost instantly and I remember I, people's birthdays i'm terrible at that i feel bad i like remember I forget days my own birthday <laughs> like <laughs> i know and i have to remind you every year it's really weird yeah i but. it's just yeah Two things that I, I try to get better at remembering and I He's just, not. yeah, they just don't click with me, unfortunately. <laughs> nope, nope. Um, okay. But yes, calendar invites, very useful. Oh, yeah, very, <laughs> it's perfect. What coping mechanisms do you use when there is nothing you can do when Mags is in pain, sick, or down um, to help her? Which we kind of answered a little bit already. Um, how do you handle seeing me that way? Like, how did you handle me hmm. when... Uh, I had to go to the emergency room for my kidney when I was septic. Again, it's just truly trying to do any and everything that you can, realizing you cannot do a whole lot at many of the times, and it, there isn't a good, it's just frustrating, and there, I don't really get angry, upset very easily, I just get frustrated, mm -hmm. and I, I can't really yeah. do anything about it, it's a, I think, perfectly normal human emotion that, I mean, I could go for a jog or something, um, but... At the same time, it's it's still going to be there. It'll still be frustrating. And I would you say just the gotta... only times I've ever seen you mad is when you're frustrated that you can't do anything. Yeah, and you just have to accept it and come to terms with it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but yeah, it's... There, there really isn't a good answer for that one, unfortunately. It's just... <laughs> yeah. The and... coping is just accepting it. And I feel like I've, you know complained before whether it be my stomach hurts or whatever my kidney hurts and Zach is trying to solve a problem there he's trying to throw yeah. any solution and I'm and I have to remind him like me saying this is not asking you to figure out a solution to it yeah, it's uh... me just trying to get it out there because I don't know what else to do either um, and sometimes that is just being able to listen is helpful, but mm -hmm. I have a very, I think, mathematical or engineered based mindset where it's very structured, regimented, and uh, I feel like there should always be a solution to something and sometimes there just is not. Yeah. So. Which is annoying. It is. But that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so not a good answer. Uh, I wish we, there was an answer, um, but if there was an answer, then... <laughs> The world would be a lot easier to... <laughs> yeah. I want to make a video talking about caregivers and what they can do to help because mm. I think in um, regular people world, like not chronically sick people world, a lot of the things that caregivers will do to help, it, those things don't work. Like yeah. making comfort food. Um, if I'm throwing up, I'm probably not going <laughs> to eat Which share I wouldn't do cheese. that. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, I really want to make a video talking about that and how you've like yep. worked and on listening i've learned sometimes the absolute best thing you can do is absolutely nothing yes because there is nothing you can do yeah <laughs> like the other night when and we were... again that's just the coping you have to come to terms and realize there is at times literally nothing you can do yeah <laughs> well i one thing that zach did the other night we were driving home from a restaurant and i kind of told you this i got really sick i thought yeah. i was gonna throw up and i was very bloated and i told zach i'm i feel like i'm gonna throw up so you, instead of asking a hundred questions, said, okay, not if you want the windows down. And I was like, and then he said, 
if you feel like you're going to throw up, put your arm on my arm and I'll pull to the yeah. side of the road so you can throw up on yeah. the ground. Nonverbal cues help with most yeah, because situations. I, I couldn't talk. I was like, if I open my mouth, I don't know what's going to spray on our windshield. It's been a while since so, I've been thrown up on. So. I didn't want... I didn't want to, you know, start that clock. I still can't over. believe when I was young, it was like every year, there like was at least one or two times a year, I was thrown up one for like ten years straight. It got really annoying. I've never thrown up on anybody, okay? <laughs> I have thrown up on the floor. Uh, I ruined my bedroom carpet growing up. Yeah. <laughs> I, feeding tube formula comes up a whole different way than regular food. I'll tell you what. You wouldn't know. <laughs> Thankfully, I I've wouldn't. never had to do tube feeding here. <laughs> no. Um, okay, what's the next question? Oh, so I kind of have a last question, but I'm not, I'm not really going to have us answer it because there's a whole video coming on it. Oh, interesting. Well, you know. Oh, I think I know this one then, yeah. <laughs> I have gotten a number of questions about pregnancy, growing a family without pregnancy, and all of that, and next Monday I'm actually going to share a video about that. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to start talking about that. Um, but I have been asked a lot, a lot, a lot. So we'll be yeah. addressing that situation. So but... I won't give any illusions or things. Mm -mm. But... No. <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we answered all the questions. Whew, did I pass? I think so. Did I pass, guys? Anyone? I don't hear anybody complaining, so that's that's good. The crickets that's aren't chirping either, but it is winter, so that is fortunate. I they're all dead. <laughs> they're hibernating. I still to this day don't actually know what bugs do in the winter. I think they burrow into the ground. Uh, yeah, but do they, they just kind of go into like hibernation, some sort of like stasis, and then just reemerge? Because it was warm the other day, they just all reemerged, and now they're gone again. It's I, I don't think they could just I don't know. I don't know. I could Google it I or something. Probably. I saw a butterfly the other day. Like a cabbage one, yeah. but still, I it, and we had had multiple freezes at this point. I'm like, what are you doing? Did you not get the memo? Because it's been freezing. It's probably dead now, though. Yeah, poor <laughs> Rest poor in <dude>. peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions for us, I'm sure Zach would be more than happy to answer when I force you to come on video again. I don't mind. <laughs> But, the only thing I gotta realize our height difference because I have been slouched over this whole time. If I was to sit up, I don't really fit in frame super well. So the problem is, is that my microphone, and I think you guys have noticed on other videos where we're together, my mic does not pick up very well unless you're close. So I normally have it like here when I film, and then the camera cuts off there, right below it. I'm probably messing it up. But I'm now, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna tell that my voice gets louder and quieter as it moves further away. So my me, voice carries pretty well. <laughs> you're just a loud person. So I, I feel like I've been talking very loud to try and get it to pick up. But yeah. All right, guys, we hope that you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you in the next. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.